time. Yes, hep, 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 hey, homework time is here yet again. All right, well, let's start off in the customary and proper way. Let's jot our name down at the top of the paper. I will write my name where you will write yours, and then let's write today's date, because anything worth doing is worth doing well. All right, today you write the actual date where and when you are in this wonderful world of ours. Our instructions, decompose, break down, okay, take apart to understand, dissect each fraction modeled by a tape diagram. There's a tape diagram modeling a fraction as a sum of unit fractions, and as we've mentioned before, that means the numerators are one. That's what we mean by unit fractions. Write the equivalent multiplication sentence, and you're looking at that here. The first one has been done for you, so all we're doing right here is just seeing how this is done. So we have a tape, and we're told the entire thing is one whole, and that won't be true of all of them, but it's true for this one. And then there are three parts. Two out of the three parts are shaded in, so that's obviously the fraction two-thirds, which is one-third plus one-third. And here's the simple part. One-third plus one-third? Well, that's two one-thirds. Two times one-third. Two-thirds equals two times one-third. Two-thirds equals one-third plus one-third. Two-thirds equals two-thirds. That's it. Crack. All right, let's go on and actually do some ourselves. Well, just look at what we have here. It's B and C. Okay, let's take a quick look at both of them. They both have one hole as the entire tape, so we're not dealing with any kind of improper fractions slash mixed numbers here. We're just dealing with proper fractions. This one is divided into four parts, three of which are shaded. This one's divided into five parts, four of which are shaded. Okay, so we'll start off by saying, what is this? And I'm going to do these out this way. I'm going to say, okay, look, this is fourths, and three out of the four are shaded, which is equal to, and underneath this, I'm going to write this is one-fourth, right? And one-fourth, and one-fourth. See, isn't that pretty? So I'm basically labeling the tape diagram in the process of writing my number sentence. And then to uh, write that same expression as multiplication, hey, I'm saying 3 fourths is, well, how many 1 fourths do I have? I have three of them. So if I do 3 times 1 fourth, I will have 3 fourths. Beautiful. Note, by the way, as I've mentioned before, but the whole number is written about the size of the entire fraction. It doesn't have to be like perfect, but you don't want to write the three all tiny where it looks like something it's not. All right, so uh, same thing on this one. We have four out of five. So four out of five. We can also call four fifths. And that is, now what are each of these? They're fifths, right? They're born fifths, they die fifths, they fifths. So this is one fifth because I'm doing the sum of unit fractions, that's what this means, and one-fifth, and one-fifth, and one-fifth. And again, I'm doing this such a way that I'm kind of labeling the tape diagram so everything lines up and makes sense and you don't make uh, mistakes. All right, so I have four one-fifths. So that is to say that writing this same idea as multiplication, that four-fifths is four times one-fifth. And if you check your math on all this, three-fourths is a fourth and a fourth and a fourth, so right? there's three-fourths there. Three-fourths is three-fourths. Four-fifths is four one-fifths, and four-fifths is four times. Okay, everything checks out, makes sense. Not so bad, huh? Moving on. O D. Dee dee, dee dee is such a very nice letter. There it is, D. And again, the whole tape is one whole, so we don't have to worry about anything in terms of improper fractions or mixed numbers. It's a proper fraction. We have one, two, three, four, five, and six parts, five of which are shaded, so that is five out of six. It's getting easier now, isn't it? 
And so I'm going to label each of these. Remember, they're born six, they die six, they is six, yo. So I'm going to label each of these one-sixth. So I have the sum of unit fractions, one-sixth and one-sixth and one-sixth and one-sixth. Make that look more like a plus. All right. And one six, everything lines up. One, two, three, four, five, six is five six. And to write this as multiplication, I would say that, hey, five six in the land of multiplying is five times one six. Sorry, I can't make this any more difficult. That's what you get. All right, let's go look at number two. Oh, oh this one's going to crack you up. No, actually, it's it's not funny at all. All right. Now, I write the following fractions greater than 1. So, in other words, these are fractions that are greater than 1. Now, we're looking at improper fractions. Now, we're looking at mixed numbers. And we will write them as the sum of two products. So, that means we'll have two multiplications going on that will be added together. The sum of two products. So, let's take a look at this in practice. All right. So, note here that the one bracket, the one whole, encompasses three of these. So what we're talking about here is thirds. Now, the, the tendency looking at this is to, and it's completely understandable, is to say, well, there's four parts. Yes, there are. There are four parts here. But how many of them comprise one? Three. So there, we're talking about thirds. They're born thirds, they die thirds, they is thirds. Okay, so what we have here is a total of one, two, three, four, what? Four thirds. So that, oh, I'm going to write it over here, four-thirds. And now when you look at what's going on here, we have one-third, right? That would be the unit fraction. And we have three of them. We have one-third three times. Notice I said three times. So three times one-third. And isn't that three-thirds, which is equal to one? which is what we have on the bracket there, right? Now here's the sum of the second product where that comes in. So we're going to add that to what we have here. And I'd like to write it down here, but that's too disjointed. So I'll just put it here. Um, now we have one more third here. So we'd say this is how many one thirds? How many times do we have one third here? We have one times. So one times one third. And another way to think of this, and they don't ask you to do this, but we're awesome, is that we're going to say that as a mixed number, we'd write this as, well, this is three-thirds, which is equal to one whole. So I'm going to write one whole. And this is one-third, which is equal to one-third, which I'll write as one-third. So four-thirds is equal to one and one-third. And when you look at this, you see one, two, three, four-thirds, and you also see one whole and one-third. Those are equivalents. That ability to go in between improper fractions and mixed numbers is going to serve you very well. I'll warn you, we are on lesson three of 41 lessons on fractions. Yeah, so buckle in. It's going to be a long ride, kids. Are we there yet? No, we're not. All right, enough of this banter. All right, so here we're talking about one, two, three, four, five, six within the one whole. So we're talking about six. And we have six six there, and then two more. So we have a total of eight six. That is our fractione, eight six. And when we look under the bracket, now it's going to get easier, right? We have how many one six that comprise the one whole? Right, well, we have six times that one six, which gives us six six equal to one. And now if I add to that, what I have extraneous to the one, I have two of those six over there. Two times I have one-sixth. And if you check yourself on this, you see six times one-sixth, and we're going to write it as a mixed number again here for practice to get ahead a little bit. So that's one whole right there, right? That's one. And then two times one-sixth, well, that's two-sixths, isn't it? So one and two-sixths. And we could go a step further with this, for those of you who are eager beavers, but I'm going to hold off because I don't want to sow confusion quite yet. Let's uh, go take a look at the next one. Oh, this one's going to kill you. 
No, really, it might. Draw a tape diagram and record the given fraction's decomposition into unit fractions as a multiplication sentence. So let's, let's take that step by step, starting off with three-fifths here. And you notice all three of these are proper fractions, all less than one, so we're going to start off kind of easy, although ninths are a pain in the butt to draw. Yes, I said butt. They are a, a big pain. I can't believe they would do that to us. Shame on you, Eureka mathematicians. So I'm going to draw a tape diagram, which is instruction number one. Now, if I draw within a rectangle, if I draw four lines, that will give me five partitions. I want to kind of equally space them best I can. One, two, three, four lines gives me five parts. And I'm going to shade in three of those. One, two, three. Okay. Now, the whole thing, and this, this is kind of important to do, even though these will all be easy and the same, the whole thing is one whole. So we're no, we're not talking about three wholes, we're talking about three fifths. Oh, yeah, three fifths. Okay, so now, now here's the second part. Okay, uh, record the given fraction, three fifths, uh, decomposition into unit fractions, so with a numerator of one, as a multiplication sentence. So this is simply to say that three fifths is, well, Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave a little space here and write times. Well, we're talking about fifths here. So the unit fraction is one-fifth. So how many one-fifths do I have to make three-fifths? I have three of them. Okay, see, so you can kind of do it backwards there to check yourself. All right, similar thing here with three-eighths, except that it's also going to be... Uh, no, actually, this one isn't too bad to draw. I take it back. I won't curse them on this one. I won't curse them at all. And so, because here you can do it, divide it in half, divide the halves in half, and then d divide the quarters in half, or I should say partition. Uh, and now I should have, you know, I can check myself, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight parts. Very good. And we're talking about three eighths. So I'll shade in three of those eighths. All right, and the entire tape is one whole. And so again, with the, uh, the multiplication, I'm saying that 3 eighths is, and I'm going to leave a little space here, just to make sure I think things out logically. Unit fraction will be 1 eighth. We're talking about eighths here. So how many 1 eighths do I have to make 3 eighths? Well, I have three of them, obviously. I could say one-eighth plus one-eighth plus one-eighth, repeated addition, or I could take the multiplication, easier, more compact way of doing things, and say three times one-eighth. Now let's do five-ninths now. This, this is the one that's more challenging to draw, but wish me luck, y'all. All right, so there's my rectangle, and so I'm going to draw eight lines to make nine partitions, okay? I'm going to try to equally space them. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight. Uh, not perfect, but not horrible either. Okay, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine partitions here. The whole thing's value is one whole, and so five ninths. I think you're getting the hang of this now, but I'll still do it that way. I'll leave a little space here and say, well, how many times am I going to have the unit fraction of one-ninth? Well, five times. So five-ninths is equal to five times one-ninth. Man, you're good. Oh, and by the way, I want a feast. I want a bean feast. No, I don't. I uh, do not want to neglect shading in five-ninths here. one two, three, four, five. Okay, five of the nine. So there's the five ninths, five times one ninth. Everything's beautiful in its own way. Moving on. Okay, and you see why I saved uh, D and E separately. These are both, yes, you notice the numerator is greater than denominator. These are both improper fractions, uh, which could be composed as mixed numbers as well. 
So the way I like to do these is I'm going to draw the one whole first. So I'm going to draw five fifths and then tack on to that the three fifths. I think that helps uh, prevent us from getting confused here. So I'm going to start off by drawing four lines to create fifths. One, two, three, and four. And so here is my one whole. All right, and I'll shade those in in a minute. And then I have another three fifths, okay? Well, let me be adventuresome and try drawing another rectangle here to make three fifths. So it's not gonna be like, that would be another five fifths. So I'm gonna back it up a bit. So I'm only gonna draw two lines inside here. And if these tape diagrams confuse you a little bit, I'd say don't worry about it. Just get used to it. Nothing to fret over. As long as you understand the fractions, you're doing great, man. All right, so now I have one, two, three, four, five fifths, which is one whole, and then another one, two, three fifths. Okay, so now I'm going to record this all the same though as, as the sum, uh, as the, uh, sorry, multiplying for unit fractions here. So that's to say that eight fifths is, well, the unit fraction is one fifth. Now how many one fifths do I have? Eight. This is kind of getting easy, huh? It's really not that much more challenging to do it out this way. So now we're talking about fourths. So this one's a little interesting. All right, so I'm gonna draw fourths. And fourths are easy to divvy up. Okay, so there's one hole. And I'm gonna shade as I go here. So there's one, two, three, four fourths. And I can do another four fourths, can I? Because I'll be doing 12. In fact, you've probably already surmised that I can do a whole nother set. So I'm going to divvy this into fourths. And I'm going to put that same bracket because this is one whole, is it not? Yes. One, two, three, four. And so now I have a total of eight fourths, but I can do 12. So another four fourths will do the job here. Trying to make it about the same size as the other ones there. Oh, it's not perfect, but I'm going to leave it rather than mess it up more. And divide this into fourths. Give it that same one whole bracket, because it is. One, two, three, four. So 12 fourths is, well, we'll leave that little space. And how many one fourths is it? It's 12. And we can see how 12 fourths is quite easily here is equal to three, like three holes. One, two, three, we see that. Great, um, oh my gosh, that one just like snuck up on us. You did it, you're done with another homework time. All right, get outside and play, and I'll see you again next time. It is once again, homework time.